Hello, this is GCC Waves Lesson 11, and this one's Lenses. So, lenses refract light and are usually formed, usually formed, usually used to form images. So, there's two types of lenses that you need to know about. First one's a convex lens. Second one's a concave lens. Now, that's what they look like. You can kind of do a shorthand version. I'll try to do this as neat as I can. But a convex lens is just a straight line with arrows like this. And a concave lens is a straight line with arrows that look like this. When you do your diagrams that we'll be doing shortly, rather than sketch out a convex and concave lens, you can just use that abbreviation. So what happens is light passes through a lens. Well, we've got here, we've got actual and draw as. So in practice, light is refracted at both surfaces of the lens, but for simplicity, we just draw one refraction. Let's slow that down. So actually you get double refraction because there's two different surfaces. But we draw it as a single refraction that occurs straight in the center of the lens. If you draw your concave or convex lens as a straight line with the arrows as I showed earlier, then this is simplified again. Right, so what does a convex lens do to light? So if you shine light in, parallel to the lens, Light will refract and it will converge. So a convex lens is also called a converging lens. And they refract to a point that we call the focus point. Now the distance between the lens and the focus point is called the focal length. So convex lenses bring the rays together, they converge at a focus and convex lenses are therefore converging lenses. So they make light converge onto a point. All right, let's have a look at what concave lenses do. So send in parallel light again. And what concave lenses do, they do the opposite to converging lenses or convex lenses. They make light diverge. So they're also known as diverging lenses. So what we can do with a concave lens is trace back using a ruler the rays of light as if to where it appeared to have come from. So like that. The dashed lines as well because it's, a, it's called a virtual focus. The focal length again is the distance between the virtual focus and the centre of the lens. So concave lenses spread the rays out, they diverge away from each other. The rays seem to have come from a virtual focus on the other side. And just to reiterate, concave lenses are also called diverging lenses. You might want to sketch that out, it's completely up to you. All right, let's move on. So ray diagrams. So in reality, light is reflected off all points of a non-luminous object in lots of different directions. However, to work out what sort of image a lens will produce, we just do two rays the top point of the object, one parallel to the axis and one to the centre. When we do the ray diagrams that will become clear but this is just a you know obviously a mass simplification. If we did it the first way we'd never be able to draw diagrams so that's how we do it. Let's have a look at some. So first of all we need to establish some rules for ray diagrams. So a ray diagram will look something like this. Oh, this is the setup, should I say. So you've got your lens in the middle. This is a convex lens or a converging lens. Remember, you could just draw it as a simple straight line that goes up. Try and do this as... I'm not very good at this. That's the worst straight line ever. Like that one. And then you need a focal length. So if you're drawing this on paper, you might want to put that maybe, I don't know, three centimetres or four centimetres, depending on how big your paper is. And then two Fs obviously double that, but you'll need the focal lengths on there. So the rules, we have an object, which is in brackets simplified. That's because it's simply just the height of the object. Doesn't matter what it is, could be anything, but that's its height. So the first rule, a ray of light parallel to the axis. This is the axis. Is refracted through the focus on the other side. So there we go. So... That's a ray parallel to that axis, refracts through F. 
The second rule, you put a ray that passes straight through the optical centre of the lens and it's undeflected, so it looks like this. Now that's actually enough for your ray diagram to establish where an image is formed. You could put a third ray in, but it's not necessary. And the third ray is simply a reflection of the first ray. So you pass through F first, and once you hit the lens, then you go parallel. But where these rays meet, that's where the image is. So it gives the position and the size of the image. And then we can compare them. And we can also do a magnification calculation. So if the image is larger than the object, that will be magnified. And if the image is smaller than the object, it's smaller, but we use the word diminished. And magnification is simply image height divided by the object height. And some more keywords. So if the image is the same way up as the object, then we call it upright. If the image is upside down, when you compare it to the orientation of the original object, we say that it's inverted. And the last one, if the rays pass through the object, it's a real image. If the rays appear to come from the same side as the object, which you'll see on one of the diagrams, it'll make it clear, then we say that it's virtual. So basically, if it's on the right-hand side, of, if it's on the opposite side of the lens, when you do your diagram, it's real. If it's on the same side of the lens as the object, it's a virtual image. One more bit of information is that real images can be projected onto a screen, virtual images cannot. So real images can be projected onto a screen, virtual images cannot. So if you've got some graph paper you might want to do this, remember you can put f 4 centimeters away from the center of the lens, make sure 2f is another 4 centimeters or 8 centimeters from the, from the, from the center of the lens. You can also do this on line paper, just make sure that you've got a ruler. So basically there are five positions and you could be asked to draw any of these in an examination. So you've got outside 2F, so you put your object beyond 2F. There's another image produced at 2F. Then there's one between F and 2F. There's at F and in front of F or inside F. And what we can look at is image position and then identify whether it's upright, inverted, real or virtual. And then there's uses as well. So what I'm going to do is to go through each diagram. You might use the first one as an example and then try and finish the rest on your own. But I'm going to go through them all anyway. And I'm going to go through all the uses. So first one is an object outside 2F. So if you draw an object outside 2F, we just need to follow our lens diagram rules. So we need to go parallel to the principal axis and then refract through F. And then the second ray light, remember, just passes straight through the optical center and is undeflected. Remember, there is a third construction ray that you can draw where you pass through F, get to the lens, and then go parallel to the axis, but it's not necessary. So as you can see, we can draw our image there, and then we can compare it to the original image. Original image, original object. So because it's on the other side of the lens, it's going to be real. It's upside down, so we say that it's inverted, and it's smaller than the object, so we say that it's diminished. So real, inverted, and diminished. Let's have a look at the uses. Cameras and human eye. Now you can get asked a question on this specific one. It can just say what type of image is produced uh, by the human eye and you need to just know that it's real, inverted and diminished. They could say the same about a camera. So it could be a quick two mark question. What type of image is produced by a camera? Real, inverted, diminished, RID. Just try and remember that. All right, let's move to the Next one. So you could try these on your own now if you want to, or you could just watch. Right, object at 2F. So this time we're going to put the object at 2F. We're going to do the first construction ray. So parallel to the principal axis, refract through F. Second ray line, straight through the optical center, undeflected. We've got our two construction lines now. We can get the image. So the image is there. So if you want to try and describe that one using keywords, so it's on the opposite side of the lens, so it's real. It's upside down, so it's inverted. And in this instance, it's the same size as the original object. So it's the same size. Let's look at the uses.
copying camera and a projector. All right, if you want to have a look at the next few on your own, then check through them, that would be useful. Let's have a look at the next one. So between F and 2F, so this time the object goes between F and 2F, follow the rules again, parallel to the principal axis, refract through F, second ray light, straight through the optical centre, undeviated, and where the construction rays meet, that's where we get our image. So if you can describe this one using the keywords, so it's on the opposite side of the lens, so it's real. It's upside down, so it's inverted. And it's larger than the object, so it's magnified. So real, inverted, magnified. So uses of this one. Projectors. We've obviously seen projectors at school, you get big, Im big images. They're inverted. And the real, remember, real images can be projected onto a screen, virtual images cannot. Right, what about an object to F? So follow the rules, parallel to the axis, refract through F, straight through the optical centre. So you might have got a bit confused by this one if you tried it, but there's no image, so the rays don't meet. Uses, searchlights. Image position, none or infinity. Right, so object inside F. So we just follow the rules again. It's a, it's a bit tricky, this one. It comes up and exams quite a lot. But once you've done it, it's quite straightforward. So parallel to the axis, refract through F. Second one, straight through the optical center. And as you can see, these two rays are moving away from each other, so they'll never meet. So what you have to do in this scenario is trace them back to where they appear to have come from and then draw your image where they meet. As you can see, these are dashed lines. It's a virtual image because it's on the same side of the lens as the object. So you cannot project this one onto a screen. And then if we describe it, it's virtual. It's upright because it's in the same orientation as the object. And it's much larger, so it's magnified. Uses, magnifying glass. So hopefully you can draw these diagrams now. If you want to practice some more, that'd be useful. Worth quite a lot of, you know, you can get a, a construction question and then, you know, describe the image with quite a lot of marks, you know, difference between a full grade. So it's worthwhile getting to getting to know these inside out and they come up quite often as well. Next lesson is going to be a bunch of exam questions on lenses. So that'll be useful as well. And thanks for watching.